There are three things guaranteed in life. Death, taxes, your private O3 runs getting tracked and crashed, and like, that was four, but we all know that I can't count. That was an impressively shit joke. Jesus Christ. If you've been running O3s in a private Discord or just trying to run some sanctuaries with your guild, you are likely very familiar with the concept of people crashing and tracking. And even if you run with Discords such as Dungeoneer or Osank, you've probably heard RLs talk about it at least once. If not, you'll get the gist of it throughout this video. As far as I know, there are two groups of trackers. There's the group that uses a private software slash method to track the exact location of players, usually Oris 3 raid leaders because where they are is where the runes are. And then you have the second group that use a much more accessible method to see what realms have a low number of heroes of Oryx remaining. I'm not too too sure if the first group of people I mentioned still exists, so uh, if anyone's a gaming god and wants to, you know, leave a comment and tell me if I was wrong or not, that would be pretty nice I guess. The thing with trackers is that it's much more noticeable and affects smaller runs on a disproportionate scale compared to a raid with a large number of people. That sentence probably didn't make much sense but I'll try my best to explain. With larger runs, pretty much discord runs like Ozank, the realm gets filled to its cap and around 75-ish people make it into the sanctuary. As it's such a large volume of people, it's basically impossible to really know if anyone is tracking unless you're combing through the people in the raid and even then you have the people that were in the realm beforehand and guildies who had locations lead to them, etc. Basically, it's impossible to notice. However, in a guild run, for example, or a private run, it is insanely easy to notice who your run is being tracked by. It's gotten to the point where certain people in guilds are infamous for tracking realms and just waiting for people to pop runes. I feel like a decent amount of the community may be cool with people staying in the run if they just happen to be there or stay for the mini boss, but if they see these same people coming into their runs over and and over and over again, then I can completely understand why they'd start getting frustrated. Runes are usually fairly expensive, going for around 3 decas for a full set, and if you only intend to run the sanctuary by yourself or with friends, seeing people leeching off of the runes constantly while likely not giving you any respect or items probably makes your gameplay experience feel pretty shitty. With public discords, I personally feel like crashing and tracking aren't as much of a problem. Now, before you tell me to perish, please hear me out. Out, probably a horrible take but it is what it is you're just gonna have to hold that. I define a private run as a run where a group of people does things in an attempt to stop as many external people from joining the run. Things like discord suspensions, asking people to leave, paying people to leave, not shooting oryx too so that people die, which is uh interesting to say the least, stuff like that. In most public discords like Dungeon and Osank, you don't get suspended or asked to leave unless they are veteran runs. If the trackers slash hackers refuse to leave, people resort to a how do I put it? Bullshit. Or at least in my case, when I'm in a vet run, RLs resort to some bullshit that I personally don't really agree with. In the sanctuary, essentially every mini boss apart from Baser has a counter. You can trigger these by either dealing or abstaining from dealing damage in a certain phase. With Lucorix, you can not shoot orbs to third and first counter. Gems block, you can shoot the wrong coin to slow and weaken the group, but I don't really see anyone doing this one. And with Dharma, you have everybody's absolute favorites. PvP, Miasma, and Sick and Nivals, and then Oryx himself. Shooting when he has his shield up triggers one of multiple different status effects for 30 seconds, and when it's something like Sicken or Armor Breaking, it can get pretty dangerous. To me, there are a couple of problems with this. Main one being that the people that track are most likely hacking, so there's basically no risk of death. They'll just auto Nexus worst case scenario. But normal raiders are extremely susceptible to actually dying during things like PvP, Miasma, and then Oryx Sick encounter. And the second issue that I have with it is that it's just really toxic. This is from a raider's perspective because I have no guild to run with threes with, so circumstances may differ, who knows, but I don't know man, hearing an RL say, oh, okay guys, we're, we're gonna pass, is kind of, mm, I don't know. I understand the frustration, but at the end of the day, it's a shitty solution to a shitty problem. Apart from deck and managing to kill off tracking bots completely, which I'd assume probably isn't the easiest thing in the world, the only other solution I've seen is giving runes the power to just pretty much vote kick. But to be that 
that's also a solution that I'm kind of on defense about. I made a comment on a post suggesting that which kind of sums up how I feel about the idea. Let's say a group rushes a realm that's close to closing and there's other people in there with runes. It would just become a contest of who can pop runes the fastest so they can just kick the other group out. I can just envision it breeding mass amounts of toxicity and dividing the community up even more. I wanted to spend the second part of this video talking about the upcoming fame changes. As most of you have noticed, fame is like 10 times easier to acquire. You get fame from maxing, from hitting enemies, from killing cubes. Hell no, in this game's game chat system, you could probably gain fame by telling someone to kill themselves. Uh, where was that? Right, uh, Deku realized that players are gaining a mass amount of fame and are making adjustments to prices for things that cost fame. I have faith that they won't increase prices by a ludicrous amount, but hey, you never know, man. With fame being way easier to get, it's allowed people to level up and fuse pets much more efficiently, which is really nice because there are a lot of people who are free to play or don't have a lot of time to grind a large amount of dungeons. Before the rework, you couldn't really just run any particular dungeon and get fame. People had to resort to things like fame trains to get enough to eventually suicide their character, get enough fame to feed their pet, or only feed their pet items above like 7k feed power and then repeat the process. But now you can just, you know, play the game, instead of just sitting in a fame train. But again, as I said, I don't think the price changes will be too bad, but if you haven't already, be sure to feed your pets, buy dyes and blueprints, and be sure to upgrade your pet yards. This video came out pretty late and I'm still trying to work out a semi-consistent schedule. The next video should come out fairly soon, but don't quote me on that. A great friend of mine has started streaming on Twitch, and I'd appreciate it if anyone went to stream to check it out. It will be the first link in the description below. Also just wanted to say the recent growth on the channel has been absolutely absolutely insane and I just want to thank you guys again. I've said pretty much all I've wanted to, if you've made it this far a like and or a subscription would be much appreciated and make sure to enjoy the rest of your day or night.